Hello, welcome back to Monster Train. I am, as always, your host, a coffee mug full of crickets. How you doing? How's it going? It's the classic 3.20 a.m. Monster Train recording session. I'm not feeling too, too tired. I'm a little sad that we lost the old, lost the old streak yesterday. However, I'm here to persevere, win or lose, you know? I should really not be affected by wins or losses, I feel like, because at the end of the day, I'm just going to play another run the next day anyway. Last run was a lot of... There was a lot to learn in the last run. Easy. It's, it's less of a run where you learn, oh, wow, I can't believe this is how this works, but, and more of a run where you learn, oh, I need to do a little more thinking. The no strategy in this game, no matter how much people meme about it and like how much people will say it's so broken, no strategy in this game is a 100% brain dead win, except for Apex Imp. Fuck Apex Imp. I can say that, fuck, it's a minute. Don't worry. Uh, I hope that you're doing well today. I'm hanging in there. I'm a, I'm a little, I'm feeling a little bit of the fatigue, but I don't think it'll be a problem. I'm feeling... As long as this run has actual decision-making to do, it should be fine. Excuse me while I take a drink of water right in the intro. What the heck, me? But, uh, yeah, I don't think I have anything else to tell you. Not a whole lot on the mind today. The big thing that I've been doing, uh, a few days ago I asked you about suggestions for mobile game downloads. I have not tried any of them, though I did read them. I'm very behind on the YouTube comments, and I'm sorry. I have, uh, you know, I, I don't have the, the time to reply to all of them anymore, but I've been, I read every comment that you leave me, for better or for worse, but I've been spending most of my time on crossword puzzles. I've been, I've been doing a lot of those lately. That's been the big one. So, I... I'm having a great time, but once, I, once I'm out of crossword puzzles to do, I'm going to start going through the game suggestions you guys gave me. You had some pretty good suggestions in there. I'm looking forward to trying them all out. That was like three days ago. I don't know why I'm just talking about it now. Anyway, uh, I don't believe... I don't really have a good question lined up. I had one, but I've lost it, so... Actually, you know what? I do have a good one for you. What's your favorite insect? I w I've been doing a lot of insect-themed... Uh, like intros i don't really know why but yeah you got any bugs that you like a lot i hate bugs i'm very bug averse however i like flies i i have no problem with flies i don't know why because every other bug in the known universe even ones that i know are harmless i'm like ooh, i don't want that anywhere near me but flies i have no problem with i can let a fly land right on me and i go hey buddy how you doing flies and like bit the bigger bees like bumblebees those guys are chill I like them. Those are my two picks. I do I do really like bees, though. Honeybees and bumblebees. Ooh, those are nice. Then you see a wasp and you go, hey, you're a bitch. And then it stings you 17 times. Yeah. Shall we? I need to move the mic just a little bit. Oh, it's because my, my mic arm is... That's what's wrong. My mic arm isn't tightened all the way. Hold on. Ignore these rumblings while I do this. Give me a sec. There we go. No wonder it's been moving around weird. All right. Rage Talos, Darkness Arcus, Sap Seraph, Sap Seraph, Sap Seraph, Prismal Dust, Mollusk Mage, Gem Trove, where Umbra, Exile, Stygian. Like, this is the sort of run where you I can look at this run from yesterday's learnings and go, maybe Incant isn't the most obvious line here because we have a bunch of cards that don't Incant in our starter. Although we have Shade Splitter, so it's a little different than yesterday's run. There's no drags here. We'll see what they show us. Mark of a Champion sounds good. I think I take Mark and then I just don't take Gorge. I'll take whichever the other option is. And that should be fine. Yeah, Architect is going to be 150 damage on this path. And I don't really want to play Gorge Penumbra here. That's the big thing. I want this artifact. I really want this artifact. Let's take a take a quick pack shards check. Temple right before Seraph. Great news. I better not on the on the artifact. Unit draft for sure. This is ultimately like I'm gonna play in Cant if they show it to me. This is a run where we are just going to play uh, Penumbra isn't here, more or less. I'm gonna pretend Penumbra's not on the run. And we're gonna play actual whatever good unit they show us instead. 
You may hear a little clink and I'm about to take a sip. The ice is mostly melted, but not all the way melted. So there may be a little clinkage in here. Don't misplay alert. Are you scary? Probably not. I don't have any planks or anything like that, though. So this water is very cold. It's great. Very, very good water. I did not draw a single train steward yet, which is crazy. I'm gonna throw the Prismal Dust at a 2xer here. I have to hit a train steward on this turn, yeah. And that train steward blocks a lot of damage. I am taking like 18 here for this. Hmm. Interesting, huh? The Mollusk Mage kind of gets in the way, although he's doing 5, so he's no worse than train steward. We're gonna take 18 to the pyre for this. It's okay. It's like a risk I was willing to take sort of situation. We knew the risk when we took the took the trial. We just hope it pays out with something that makes it worth. Give me a life steal morsel, please. Hmm. Yeah, I think I look for another morsel here. And we just stack a little frostbite, I guess. I might take more because I might not be able to survive this. Or we draw gem throw, which is really good. Yeah, even, even if Gemfro didn't give us damage shield morsels, I was going to get morsels to tank a free round. So dam the damage shield gave us like three rounds there. Or the Gemfro gave us like three rounds there, I should say. I don't need Space Prism. I don't mind Antumbra Assault. I think it's Antumbra Assault just because I need to take a card that says deal damage on it. Targeted damage important here. And I'll grab Crystallis. Sure, sure. Bloodstone Totem. I feel like I would be silly not to take Lodestone Totem, and I don't really think, like... Yeah, I'm gonna pick Lodestone Totem, basically. Lodestone Totem answers every single problem this run has very, very easily. Quick and can armor 2, 10 attack. Plus 30, plus 10 piercing. So, we'll go... I should take Hot Shark here, sure. Yeah, like, th this is the sort of situation where if I skip Lodestone Totem, why? And the only reason to skip Lodestone Totem is because I've done it recently, but that's not gonna stop me here. I actually, I, so, this is the strategy that I think I can play anytime. I really, really like it. I was thinking about doing a removal here, but it's not worth it. So let's plan out our pack shards a little bit. We got Steel Shop coming up again. I need a plus 25. I don't know what to put on Lodestone Totem. Maybe I just maybe I just leave it on Infuse? If I see a Siren Essence or something like that, maybe. But we'll do self-infuse hot shark at this temple. We'll go left here. And we'll have so this is 25. 40, 50, 65. Okay, we got a pretty, pretty comfortable path. I'll need to take something in one of these two temples, but I think we have a pretty good pack shards path here. Invasion Trial I'm okay. We take it easy in the next two combats before... I ideally, we get a plus 25 for the Lodestone Totem so that we don't have any awkwardness. But this is really... It's really strong because much like the Bogfly strategy, this handles everything. The, the Bogfly version of this run, I should say. This, this Lodestone Totem does all of the work. It's going to sap every enemy down to zero. And then... Or Relent so Pyre kills everything, and then in Relentless, Penumbra will take care of the rest. Because Penumbra will, in in 100 rounds, Penumbra will do a lot of damage, because we have three, we have Archetype Penumbra. So I think overall, we have a pretty clear and well-defined victory path. Give me a morsel, why not? Well, the why not is because now it's a misplay alert, misplay alert, but... Dude, Cranberry said that once in, like, one episode, and it haunts me. When he... Every now and then he'll bring it up, I guess. But, like, misplay alert. It just it echoes in my brain every time I make even the slightest mistake. Just misplay alert. Misplay alert. I'm ruined. 
But no, we're gonna, like, this combat and combat four will most likely be the riskiest because we won't have as much sap to put out. But after that, once the deck is a little more refined, we should crush. Mind Collapse gonna take for the same reason we took the other card that does damage. What was it? What's it called? Antumbra Assault? That one. And Offering Token is an incant. We want to take cheap incants here, more or less. And we go left. The biggest big money we could pick up here would be... Like, the, the super high roll get is Blood for Blood. I... I know you're thinking maybe go Incan Armor 2 here, but Incan Armor 2, if I'm gonna play top floor, which I guess I don't have to, I can play mid floor. I'm gonna play two Lodestone Totems. I could play mid floor potentially, and then I could do two Incan Armor 2s. Divinity does how much? How much does the Divinity do, like? No, I'm incentivized to play top floor. So the reason that it's bad to go two Incan Armor 2s is because I have to play three spells with Lodestone Totem or else it dies to the sweep, right? Yeah, so. Sorry about the clink. We gotta roll for health, though. No plus 25? What the heck? You can give it large stone, I think. Large stone's pretty safe in the next combat, too. But, like, it's... It's fine, right? I have Architect Penumbra giving me... I have 4 space right now. 5, 6 space total. When... Yeah, so we have, we have 5 space after Talos, and we have 6 space after Arcus. Large stone means that two lodestone totems take up four space collectively, so I have room to do anything with this. Yeah, it's fine. You could also go damage shield three there, by the way, if you're if you're interested. I think damage shield three is also a winning line. Same banner. Uh, and now I save a duplicate because I can just take a second hot shark, and I will go in here and I will self infuse the hot shark right now. That's fine. Done. 25 pack shards. Good. So, now I can duplicate Lodestone Totem here. I probably was gonna do that anyway when I realized that I want a second Lodestone Totem, but... Either way. You wanna show me Blood for Blood? Hmm... Is it one of the Purge Units Endless? I don't know, I never Purge a Unit. And at this point... I'm too afraid to start. Give him Gem Trove, because if he makes it free, that's sick. And that card is basically unplayable. In the in the next room... Sorry, I'm making a lot of ambient noise here. Although, most people also tell me that the ambient noise usually doesn't pick up, so hopefully it's not so bad. Maybe you're thinking, what ambient noise? In which case, good. I'm not going to go to 40 here. I was thinking about Spell Chaining Offering Token there. Spell Chaining Offering Token... Is fine, but going to 40 right before Talos in a run that I'm not super confident in. Probably not right. Yeah, this is where the... The choice to go large stone pays off quite a bit here. Because we get our totem down without any fear. Missing shark doesn't really matter also. Smallest mage. Misplay alert almost. Misplay alert almost. It only really matters how much I can incant on. Like, incanting right now doesn't matter. I'm just giving armor. It doesn't. I don't care. But incanting on turns where enemies are here. Now that actually matters. A little bit. It feels kind of weird. Not that weird, though, I guess. Once we have the second one of these totems out, also, it's gonna be a lot easier to see our incant numbers feel a little bit better. Because you effectively need half as much incant for the same effect, but even just three sap is enough to stop most enemies at this stage of the game. And as the deck scales up, it becomes much, much cleaner, of course. That does 23. Yeah, I feel... Pretty confident here. Actually, Talos is not going to have a whole lot of sap on her, so it's going to kind of come down to how much sap I can put on Talos. But the large stone helps contribute to this feeling less scary, I would say. Also, my unit order is kind of wrong. I feel like I would actually rather have Penumbra behind the Mollusk Mages, because that's one more round of Penumbra. 
two more rounds of penumbra slapping for 38, I guess. Yeah. I think oh wow. Great time to draw Hot Shark, actually. Yeah, never mind. No fear. Hot Shark just does 211 to this boss with the self-infuse. I should have maybe not played Mala's Mage, actually, in hindsight, because I could have missed my Hot Shark, but yeah, never mind. We're chillin'. Okay, so I'm gonna go... I'm gonna go Energy first and then draw after Arcus. I think Energy with Lodestone Totem is always gonna be the right take. And then we'll just kind of grab cards that incant, right? If anything. Hard as the Titan. Now, nah, Forever Consumed is better because Hard as the Titan is a one energy in camp, but Forever Consumed is a zero energy in camp. Much better. I could grab a Siren Essence or Lodestone Totem, but I really don't feel like I need it. I don't think it's worth the pack shards. We'll grab energy. I So I believe that this run wins very decisively, and I'm going to play it in the way that I think wins decisively, which is to put a second Lodestone Totem in. And if it doesn't win, it'll be interesting, and we can kind of review from, from there. Stone seems fine on Crystallis here. I need to take something for pack shards. So let's go to 40. Nice even 40. So we'll go 55, 65, 80 here. And then I just have to take... So maybe I want to take 10 more somewhere. I can take 10 more by duplicating Crystallis, I guess, is maybe the best option. I'm not sure, right? Getting a clean... Because I'm going to have to go to 50 if I want to grab a true stone. And 50 is a little scary. <laughs> eh, it's probably not that scary. Let's put Piercing on Mind Collapse. This is a little disrespectful, but it lets me get a clean 100 pack shards. Oh, God. Haste Combat. Yo, no infusion on the first round of Haste Combat? Am I dreaming? Don't wake me up, please. I will end up having the wave super stack because I play this hot shard. Eh, it's not bad. I could stop it, but I'm going to play Lodestone Totem number two instead. Because once we get the two Lodestone Totems down, I think that no, no super stacking matters. Like, from this position... This wave isn't going to do anything to me, I don't believe, because it just gets absolutely ruined. I'm going to keep Shark alive here and let the haste go through. It's probably not going to... I'm, I'm going to take some hits from the Clip Guardian, actually. Because, yeah, he's going up at one. But not that much. It was one, three, five, seven, which is nine... 15. That's not so bad. Considering the draw. Yeah, what a weird looking floor, huh? I think I'm holding these Prismal Dots and I should and I should just get rid of them. Let them in camp. Take another 5? Yeah. We're gonna want to prioritize, maybe not prioritize, but we'll want to go to some higher health pickups on this run. Probably a few of them. Just having 110 Pyre Health will make my life much easier. Get my own Mollusk Mage so he doesn't beat a curse, I guess. Hmm. This run... You know what I would put on Lodestone Totem here? You're never gonna believe it. You know what would be good here, though? Glacial Seal. I think Glacial Seal would be legitimately strong, though, because it, uh... It's not strong. It's too late, basically, because I already have two of them. It's definitely too late for Glacial Seal. Ember Forge, on the other hand. Well... No. I could take Titan Sooth. I'll just grab Preserve, because it's a free incant. I feel like Preserve is that good of a card, but it's in camp. Ooh, Money Jump Trope. 
Oh, I'll see her. Great. I like that. Yeah, I think Bloodstone Totem is my unit. I, mean, to be, I think everyone has their unit that's like, yo, I'm very excited to play this. Bloodstone Totem is mine. I love playing Bloodstone Totem so much. We play Bloodstone Totem every day. That's plus 25. Removals now go to Mollusk Mage, and then we start cautiously taking out Foregone Powers, probably down to three. So in four removals, I'll basically have removed everything I want. But let's look for Endless real quick. Multi strike. Disgusting. Founding Seal. Alright. So we we win. That's the end. Great. It's not even a Seraph that threatens us. Yeah, we just crush. Cool. I don't know, man. I don't I don't mind it. And I don't I don't feel like I need to justify myself in any way. But I also I clearly do because I'm talking about it, right? I just I try to keep the runs fresh and this is a run that we played a very similar line of, but it's different, also. Well, Snow Totem, I still think, is a build around. When this card was one energy, it was bonkers. This is disrespectful. I'm going to do it. When, but when Wild Stone Totem was one energy, he was really disgusting. It's It says a lot about the card itself, in that it costs three now. Really important to dodge this Ember Drain, by the way. Dodging this Ember Drain matters a lot. I think plus one energy on the next turn might be the difference on playing Shark or not. And indeed it is. Although we would have been able to sneak the Shark out with the Mind Collapse, but still. No, one, one energy, one energy Bloodstone was disgusting. At three energy the unit can still carry, which speaks to how strong it was back in the day. But it's, it's kind of the, it's the situation, right? Sap is a mechanic. I've said it many, many times over the course of time. Sap is a mechanic that is really out of control. We want to put Prismal Dust on the backmost one to stop any loss damage shield, I guess. Although it's sweep boss, so it doesn't matter. Damage shield doesn't have to carry over into Relentless. Yeah. Now, let's don't tell him it's just... Sap as a mechanic is too powerful, I feel like, for this game. And when, when your enemies have... A high end attack point for an enemy is 30. It doesn't take a whole lot of minus twos to turn 30 into zero. 15 is the most, and 15, but even at 15, right? If if you can't make 15 on your in, on your hits, playing two at a time, right? Oops. There goes the damage shield. That was a misclick. But like from a numbers perspective, you. You fools. I should put a like steel morsel in front that puts like seven more damage to that enemy. I guess. You know, even if you're cutting like eight sap from an enemy, right? Or four sap, you're still cutting a lot of attack from them, basically, is what I'm trying to get at. Which is why sap is just a bonkers mechanic, and I'm really surprised that it still exists like this. Although, what are they gonna do? Remove a mechanic? I doubt it. I'd be surprised anyway. Play four spells and the combat goes from lost completely to enemy die. It's because of the zero two it doesn't attack. I think fifteen times two because of the probably sixteen times two actually. That enemy getting taken out is the important part. Ember Forge again. Well, when you put it like that, still no. Oh my god, it's here. It's Glacial Seal. Yo, I'll take it. Like, legitimately, I'll take it. Get in here, Glacial Seal. Dude, this... Glacial Seal got golded on a challenge run where I meant I went to take it out at the very end. I, what, what happened in that run, if you didn't see it? I had Glacial Seal, and I was going back and forth on if I was going to let it make it to the end or not. And I let it get purged in the final combat. As like a haha, because it, it was a the challenge was permadeath on it. So I did like a haha. He didn't make it to the end, but then he got golded anyway because that's how it works apparently. So anyway, uh, this run should be Glacial Seal's moment to shine, but that moment got robbed by uh, expert challenge runs. A good example of why I 
don't just gold cards for fun. It lets us create these fun, these, these like storylines for the cards where it's like, oh wow. But you shall see, let's find at long last. It's okay too this way. I don't think it matters too much either way. I doubt many of you are super invested in which cards are golden and not. Yeah, I don't really need anything else from the magic shop, right? I could re-roll for another minus one, but is that really worth it? I have so much money. I guess it is. What else am I going to spend it on? I want to consume spells, though, so... I'll throw another minus one at Shade Splitter. Why not? Darkness, is it? Darkness Arcus? That's spell shield? Yeah, he has an enchant shard. The, the trick you can learn for Arcus, if you need to, this can give you pretty good accuracy. The one that doesn't have incant shards is the one that's cursed fell. If that makes sense. If that makes sense. If you see no incants, you know you're going against the cursed fell strategy. Which is to say your first two waves are curses. The only one that you have to worry about is in terms of the enemy distribution. Maybe Glacial Seal isn't worth playing here. Eh, no, Glacial Seal. Get in here. Man, that card costs two. I paid two for that. <laughs> uh, hilarious. I was saying something else and then Glacial Seal distracted me with its excellence. Whatever it was, I'm sure it wasn't that important. We're secretly playing a big frostbite strategy. Oh. Alright. I said I was gonna go get some more water at some point, and I never did. At this point, it's too late. We're 30... Oh, point 26 minutes in. This one's kind of zooming, but... Did I incant with this? Huh. I must have. I didn't even notice. I can feel it now. I can feel the, the fatigue starting to catch up to me a little bit. I can feel the feel the tiredness. What happens when I get this type of tired? There's, there's two types of tires that I get when I'm recording, or like on... When, when I'm recording late, I should say. The type of tiredness that I have right now is the one where I'm like, yeah, I just kind of want to go to sleep. And like sleepy tiredness, I just want to turn brain off and not think. The other type of tiredness I get is just the one where I'm falling asleep and I make no actual decisions. I, instead of making choices, just click the cards, I guess. I think someone someone commented this as like a, a mad at you comment of no decision making, just click cards, something like that. It's a pretty good roast. But that is what happens. Although... Funnily enough, I think the person who commented, like, this run is such garbage or whatever, I don't remember the exact comment, but they were really mad at me for some reason. Uh, I think on the on the run that they were mad about, I won. It was the real, the real mystery in my mind. Like, this run... Like, th th this is the other weird part of Monster Train, though. I don't have any doubt in my mind that we crush this run. I actually kind of think Glacial Seal makes sure of that, with specifically Arcus here, who I didn't get to put a lot of value into in terms of free Relentless Sap, but... From this position, I think the run is basically unlosable. I can't imagine it where I lose from here. So I'd have to add some cards that mess me up, I guess. But I have to go through the motions of the next three floors. I guess next floor can be bad if it's Trample Boss, but I don't know. Biggest thing I have to look out for is not getting enough Pact Shards. Um, so here, here's the deal. Cheater's Hand is the better take here. Cheater's Hand is a really, really good relic. I'm going to skip because I don't want to have to click the interface to accept or decline Cheater's Hand. Yeah, I know. I'm gonna remove two Shade Splitters here as well. I'm okay with going to 21 cards. I'll just pick something up.
I guess I'll draw one. I have enough morsels for Mask of Penumbra there. The other two were like, extra spell slot, who cares, and... Whatever the third relic was, it must have been bad because I instantly forgot what it was. I can't remove any more cards. Like, I have to stop. I'm gonna hurt myself. I'll roll for Endless, I guess. It doesn't matter, though. If I miss Endless, it's okay. Double Incant ensures of it. Without Double Incant, I might have been a little bit more worried, but Double Incant, Founding Seal, just goes, hey, don't need that shark. I think... I think I can take the Invasion Trial. When you think about it, it's like 30 damage that's gonna get pushed to my... It's like 35 damage, I guess, that'll get pushed. Oh my god! <laughs> this is your nightmare case on this combat. If you've ever wanted to see the face of terror, Sorry, I had a little cough there. It's th this is like the fact that this can happen to you. I think is really dumb. Even not trying to complain too much, but I think it's really silly that. Oh dear! Thank you, preserve. I just think it's really, really silly that the turn one. How much is this? Turn one can be two thirty, two ninety. Like, come on. What do you do to this? There's there's nothing you can do. You just take it. And you say thank you, I guess, to Monster Train. Really, thank you to Preserve. That Preserve lets me hold Bloodstone Totem. I'm gonna take a lot of damage to the spikes on the first guy. And that's gonna suck a little bit. I'm gonna block these hits, I guess. May as well, right? I think so. I guess I could have blocked it a little more with the morsels, but... Eh. I need this attack. I feel like I should have played Hot Shark, actually. In hindsight, yeah, I should have definitely played Hot Shark. I... That's... I'm being disrespectful. Floating that morsel, missing Hot Shark. I'm being very disrespectful. But I know, you know, Glacial Seal. There's nothing to be afraid of when Glacial Seal's here to save the day. He absolutely goes pog on him. Hey, that was a really good draw, by the way. Cycling back through the deck there is really nice. Wow, Glacial Seal applied enough Frostbite for me to kill this first Steel Wings, and I should take zero for it. Glacial Seal... Carries. It just carries me here. It's too good. I honestly think two energy wasn't enough of a nerf. Got him more. Glacial Seal, four energy. Five. Five energy. He deserves it. You're calling Glacial Seal a he. Glacial Seal could be a she. I'd just like to mention that while we're here. Glacial Seal is probably, it's probably most correct for me to say they. Or maybe just it, because it is a totem. You know, the personification of Glacial Seal should not concern me too much. But here I am. Nonetheless. I'll throw a... Throw a Mind Collapse at this one. I've earned it. It is also, if, you, if, you're, if you're just listening, it's not Trample Boss. Not that I really feel Trample Boss poses much of a threat, but it is not Trample Boss. Okay, I'm gonna make the executive decision to press end turn because I I don't need to incant for armor. I just need to let this man walk up. I'm not gonna press any buttons. I'm just gonna let him walk up. And then I'm going to press my incants. Get him, Glacial Seal. It's, like, it's actually a crucial member of this game plan. Laugh all you want. Glacial Seal, very important for this run. Like, actually, he's nuts. I'm only, I'm being like, 
80% joking. Glacial Seal did get to do something, but which is pretty cool. I'm not taking another one. Don't be ridiculous. Give me Guardian's Amulet, sure. I want to grab something like that. I just want to grab another card. I'm going left because I want to not have to think about removals. I'm going to try to fit it in, and I'm not going to like it. Intrinsic. I like Intrinsic Preserve, actually. This is really cool, because now if I have the... It just insulates me against the double Lodestone Totem turn one draw, right? And that's pretty neat. I think it's a good move. Make some other stuff cost zero. Shade Splitter goes to zero. Nothing else on this front. We'll just go to another zero. Oh, hey. There's only one card left. Alright, I'm just gonna buy a bunch of trinkets, I guess. Uh, these trinkets don't do anything for me. Chain of Gems does something. But I don't want to remove. I guess I'm just going to walk in with 740 gold. Nothing matters. Permafrost. Permafrost Guardian's Amulet, I guess? Sure. But I'm not buying removals. I don't want to put plus 20 and consume down, and these other two relics are worthless, right? It's Forgotten Name Jack Strips. I wonder if Jackstrips ever does anything interesting. Alright, Jackstrips. I guess I'll buy them because there's no reason not to. 100 of 100. 100 of 100. I did it. It's not even a bad Seraph. Chase Seraph would be a little annoying. I think Diligent Seraph is the real problem enemy that we could have fought here. But it's Sap Seraph. I am not afraid of Sap Seraph at all. No Endless for our poor Hot Shark here. He's trying his best. His best is just going to be very not good enough. But that's okay. He Basically, he buys us one round. And that's all that he really needs to do, also. I think you want to freeze... Honestly? kind of just want to freeze a dead weight. It takes it out of the draw rotation... So I never draw dead weight again if you freeze dead weight. I think that's pretty big brain. Alright, glacial seal, go! Deploy the glacial seal, go, go, go! Please, my. Let me, let me click. How much does it apply here in terms of frostbite? Let's see it. Let's see the big numbers, glacial seal. I'm ready to pog. 54 Frostbite. I, you know, that's close to passable. I, maybe I'm feeding a bunch of free kills to this Shadelings and I'm going to regret it. Strongly, I doubt that. Take an extra energy next turn, I guess. We're, just, we're in the we're in the end game of the deck now, where everything has been ironed out. It's just a bunch of incanting. There's nothing left. I took it all. I could catch him exactly with foregone power. Not exactly because of the extra four frost fight, but you know. I was talking about this. So I got I got a topic to fill the air here. I got it. I got it. So in Griftlands. There's a card called Blood Flow, and what Blood Flow does, this is this is going to be a lot of a lot of Grifflands jargon if you have not watched it, but in in the very briefest explanation I can possibly give you, one of the characters has a mechanic where when you take damage on your own turn, you gain a healing buff. You gain one to two stacks of a buff that heals you at the end of the, at the end of your turn, right? Pretty straightforward, pretty good. Uh, it's called Moxie, and then there's a card that you can play that just doubles the, your Moxie. So what you can do is you can you can take a bunch of cards that do self damage, and then you play the double card once or twice, and then you just heal your whole health bar every turn. It's like mechanically, it's very it sounds very strong. It takes down by half every round. It's not as overpowered as it sounds, but it's very strong, right? And I made a statement after playing a run with that card on stream of I think that generally 
when you put a card that involves the word doubling into your card game, you end up with something very ridiculous. Exhibit A is that one. You can get a few more. I'm just going to discard gem throw so I don't have to think about it. There's a few other examples I can think of. Uh, Limit Break and Slay the Spire is very strong. Catalyst and Slay the Spire is very strong. Both of those cards are related to doubling a core mechanic for you. But anyway, uh, the reason that I bring this up is because there's, there was someone very correctly brought up a counterpoint to my assessment of doubling in video games generally ends up being broken. There's a certain there's a certain card game, a little deck builder called Monster Train, that has a doubling card that isn't broken out of this world. It's Horfrost Effigy in this game. Horfrost Effigy sucks. Oh, like a lot too. I fed a bunch of armor, but I really don't think it matters. Seraph has negative like 160 attack. But I think that a why did why did I do all this talking here? Well, one to fill the air. It's kind of like a you know it's my job. I can't just go silent because there's nothing interesting to say related to the run, right? The point is to talk. But second of all, uh, the reason that Horfrost Effigy is bad is not because Horfrost Effigy is a bad card in, pri in in like design. It's actually pretty good, right? It's just you 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 have an interesting trade off of sacrificing all of the frostbite on the floor to target down a specific enemy. And, in theory, the card is really good, but I think it's really interesting the reasons why it's bad. One of the reasons that it's bad is that Frostbite sources are bad, right? I did all of this build-up to tell you that Glacial Seal sucks. A, a, a sentence that you know is true, deep in your heart, no matter where you feel. Glacial Seal sucks. I played a lot of spells on one of those turns, and my reward was Glacial Seal doing 34 Frostbite to every unit on the floor. It's just a position where no matter what you do, Glacial Seal is not going to do enough to... Like, it's never going to do enough to get to numbers that you need to get to, right? Like, 47 Frostbite to all enemies. This is, this is just why... This entire section of my dialogue is just why you can't play all, all of your game plan around Spite. And why I hate it. Basically. It, it's, it is just as simple as enemies in this game have more health than you can afford to... Or than, than Frostbite can apply, right? Frostbite applications are like 8 targeted Frostbite. I, but the, the, other, the, the flip side of it though is like if you buff it ever, it just gets way out of control. It's a really delicate balance and I think it's really hard to actually find an answer here. From a balance perspective, I think it's a really hard mechanic to find the answer to. Anyway, that's just what I, I just wanted to, you know, talk a little bit about that, because I thought it was an interesting point that Orfrost Frost Effigy is bad. But really, it's it's very not Horfrost Frost Effigy's fault, I don't think, because I mean they put a they put a tag in this game specifically in the DLC to stop you from stacking frostbite on this boss. Like they don't want you to play or frost effigy and have it be good. And I'm kind of sad. I feel like there's I feel like a lot of my Stygian builds are very one note. And I feel like there's room for some interesting stuff in here. But I always end up with this weird boring stuff like I mean, this isn't really boring, right? It's just, this is the same thing we always play. I think it'd be cool to branch out into Frostbite, but I think it's a really nightmare thing to actually balance from the devs, so I get it as well. Like, a lot of your problems in this game are just... The, a lot of problems in this game are A, derived from morsels. And th this is not a problem derived from morsels, but they're also... It's hard to solve because of the structure of the game, right? Horfrost Effigy would be cool if the mechanic was... Like, if, if there was a way for me to play Horfrost Effigy... Just uh, doing a little bit of quick math here. You see what I'm seeing? I'm a little bit... A 
little bit worried. I think it's fine. Oh yeah, he's negative 44. Like, basically, if I were to apply 34 Frostbite to a whole floor, right? And then try to use Horfrost... You can't really use Horfrost Effigy on the floor, right? Because by the time Horfrost Effigy goes through, the backline has died, and now you're getting, like, maybe 70 Frostbite, which is not enough. That's what I was getting around to here. That was the ultimate... the ultimate... point that I wanted to make. I... it... there... that's it. Like, that's... I... I cannot talk to you any more about this run. There has been nothing to say for a very long time. So, enjoy me giving you my Monster Train theory. Because there is nothing else for me to say to you. I could save myself the disappointment. Oh, wow. Sometimes I get to play an extra spell there. But yeah, like me one of the one of the other core problems is just that Frostbite has ticked down and killed most of the enemies by the time that you get to play a spell that does something to it. Hey, does this guy kill me by the way? Does Steel Slate get me here? I don't think so, right? I hope not. That'd be pretty weird. Oh yeah, I have forgotten me. I'd have to, he'd have to take 20 hits. There's no way he takes 20 hits. He'd have to have 800 health. Yeah, we're chilling. He hits us for a lot, though. Like, that man counters my plan. But that's okay. But yeah, I think that Monster Train is a really, really interesting game. I'm... I, I like to think about game design stuff like this. This is the sort of game that I feel like a lot of mechanics, you could write a really, really long discussion piece on from a balancing standpoint like how do you balance this game is just a constant nightmare because of the way that combat works you don't necessarily have to have everything balanced right Ratropolis is a fun game and that is a game based around breaking the game a lot of the time like just absolutely abusing specific broken interactions and if that's what you want out of your game, that's fine too, right? If that's what the devs intended, it's cool. I don't mind. I enjoyed breaking the game, but I think that they try to keep it balanced, considering that they actively do balance changes and nerf things. It's a strange position we find ourselves in in this game of Monster Train. I believe... I believe, like, wholeheartedly, if you see Lodestone Totem in the early game and you click on it, you have won the run. This run was nice because we were able to take large stone. I think a different run would not have been able to take large stone, but Architect Penumbra helped us out. And uh, yeah, Bullet Stone Totem just answers relentless heavies and backline for you if you have enough incants, and enough incants is not that many because of how sap is. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to leave me a like. Subscribe if you want to see more, and I will see you in the next one. Have a good one.